Hello, this is Mr. Griffith. This is Math uh, 141, Mathematical Models. And we're going to try recording a few video lectures and see how they go. So right now we're working with uh, Chapter 1, Section 1. We're dealing with the topic of communicating mathematically. Now, if you've read the section in the text, you'll notice that there's not an awful lot of math to do in this section. But what they are trying to do is they are trying to make you aware of some ways that we communicate mathematics and communicate in a mathematical manner. Uh, children of all ages, including as young as me, uh, are bombarded all the time with communicating mathematically. In the election year, we're told, that uh, uh, Senator Obama is so many points above Senator McCain with a margin of error. Uh, we are told that this car has more of a, a better gas mileage than this car. Or we are told that uh, the interest rate on a house is such and such a percent and uh, very often, we don't even know what these things mean. We use them, we uh, don't completely understand them, uh, but they are bombarded at us. Open up your newspaper and you'll find that there's data, and there's graphs, and there's uh, all sorts of things out there to try to, to make a point. You take a look at uh, advertisements and advertisements will try to sell you a product based upon certain specifications and they may even throw in some mathematics to um, make it sound better. So uh, how do we communicate mathematically? Uh, you get a credit card statement. What is it telling you? How much are you paying in uh, principal or interest? Uh, does your credit card actually tell you how much uh, you're going to be paying in interest over the life of the debt? Or how long it will take you to pay it off? Very often there are ways we don't communicate mathematically, but uh, could. So just like in any part of communication, we can wind up communicating or not communicating things uh, that we want to. Uh, we use multiple representations in order to make our point. And in the mathematics classroom, this is the, uh, this is the key point. There are multiple ways to represent just about anything. And if you don't use those multiple means of representation, then what you're doing is you're trying to fit everybody into a particular mold just doing things one particular way, which doesn't work. Children come in all kinds of uh, sizes, and their ideas about the world around them are shaped by many different things and many different influences, and everyone thinks just a little bit differently. So there are many ways to do many things, and there are many ways to represent things. Some of the ways that we uh, represent uh, data and uh, represent things are with uh, lists. Okay. Here's a list that I got. Uh, uh, BBNT uh, Bank in our area is uh, looking to try to sell me on their benefits. And so uh, they talk to me about their particular program putting it in uh, list format, giving me that information. Now, it doesn't look like there are any numbers in this list, but it is still a way of communicating information, uh, and it is still a form of mathematical uh, communication. Here is a uh, health assessment survey for Anson County. Now, uh, they're going to take the data, including the 
information that I give them. And they're going to compile this information uh, into uh, a big database. And then by that database, they're going to begin to pull out information and be able to say, this is what we were able to tell about Anson County and uh, the, uh, what, how people feel about the, the health uh, avail uh, healthcare availability and needs for Anson County based upon uh, this survey instrument. Okay. Uh, it's a very, very valid way of communicating mathematically, statistically. Uh, we use other things to communicate mathematically. We use uh, computers and spreadsheets and uh, databases on the computer. Uh, my favorite way of communicating uh, mathematically, particularly in the classroom, is by way of the graphing calculator, uh, which, uh, by the way, you're going to need and uh, you will find that uh, we will uh, learn how to use this along the way in the classroom. Okay. So, uh, there are ways for us to solve problems. How else do we uh, communicate mathematically? Uh, well, let's see. Uh, we've already talked about things like uh, uh, graphs, okay, but uh, how about Formula. Uh, formulas. Okay. Well, we communicate by way of, uh, uh, mathematically by way of formulas. Okay. So, uh, you take a look at your taxes. All right, and um, the people who uh, make up the rules for the taxes actually have a formula that they go by. You use um, you, you need to have certain services performed. Say you go to a, um, a hospital and get some blood work done. Okay, They're going to analyze your blood work and then they will look at it by way of a formula to determine whether or not uh, you, uh, your blood uh, chemistry is out of balance. Uh, here's a formula, a very simple formula we use in mathematics. Uh, rate times time is equal to distance. Uh, here the idea is that uh, if you're going say uh, 40 miles per hour and you travel for three hours, you have gone a distance of 120 miles. We communicate mathematically. Uh, again, one of the things we were talking about just a little bit earlier uh, was we were talking about uh, mileage, gas uh, mileage. Well, uh, how do we talk about that? We use MPG or uh, miles per gallon. In fact, uh, something I saw just recently that uh, wasn't uh, I haven't seen before when looking at car ads is that uh, the car ads are now for uh, cars that have a little bit better gas mileage. They're, they're promoting the gas mileage of these vehicles. Why? Uh, car sales happen to be down because gas prices are up. And if you want to entice somebody to purchase a car, well, then you have to make them aware of the potential benefits. And getting better gas mileage certainly is a uh, benefit of some uh, newer cars. Well, uh, uh, along with uh, your graphing calculators, you sometimes have geometry exploration software. And you, you have um, uh, uh, several other things that can, that can help. All right, well, uh, let's just uh, take a look at a, uh, a typical way that we uh, look at things. We look at graphs, okay? So if I'm going to draw a graph here, I'm going to have uh, two axes, all right? And uh, we're going to 
draw a uh, bar graph. This is a vertical bar graph. Okay. And uh, here is uh, A, B, and C, group A, group B, group C. And uh, let's see, we're going to uh, promote a scale right here. Okay. So we'll call this 10, 20, 30, 40, and, uh, and 50. Now if we were to uh, take a look at this, all right, so here's a, right now what are we doing? We're doing uh, a legend. And uh, let me see. So here's a legend that tells us about a, graph. And you can see from this that uh, group A had somewhere between 40 and 50 sales. Group B had somewhere between 30 and 40 sales. And group C has uh, almost uh, 30 sales in it. Now, if there wasn't a legend here, this graph would be meaningless. But what the graph does is the graph combines a lot of separate pieces of data together to make a coherent story, a visual picture of what all the data is saying or meaning. So we're looking at communicating mathematically. How about pie charts? Pie charts are like fun way that uh, people communicate mathematically. And uh, so let's see here. We'll uh, draw a circle. And here's, by the way, group A. We said, let's say they had uh, 47 sales. And uh, group B, let's say they had uh, 35 sales. And group C, let's say they had uh, 28 sales, okay? And so when you take a look at uh, that, there's 20 and that's 6, about 110 sales all together. Well, uh, what would a pie chart that uh, deals with that kind of data look like? Well, fortunately, I have a nice little um, program in my calculator that will allow me to, uh, uh, to do that and bring that up. But, um, so let's see, 47 and 35 and uh, 28 and... Um, all right, so here's the way uh, the pie chart would look. So here are group A's sales. And here are group B's sales. And here are group C's sales, okay? And if you were to uh, take a look at this, we were, would be able to uh, see that, um, pardon me, let's see. All right, this was uh, f about 43%, there's some roundings occurring here, 43% of the sales, and this has about 32% of the sales, and this has about 25% of the sales. Now, notice that our bar chart, uh, which we had had up earlier, communicated one certain thing about the sales. It communicated what they were relative to each other. This does a, does a less uh, fine job of that, although you can certainly see that this is more than this, and this is more than this. You really can't see how much more. Uh, the bar chart, the vertical bar chart, did a better job. But this tells us 
uh, each uh, group's relative position to a whole. Now again, one of the things we would want to make sure is that we do is uh, provide an appropriate legend. So we would say uh, sales uh, by group. Okay. And so we would be able to tell ourselves uh, what exactly uh, we were looking at. We communicate mathematically. 